Namaste. Today I'll be talking about one of the most common tests, hemogram. Hemogram test or complete blood count is routinely done by a lot of people. So in this video, I shall be discussing the significance of a hemogram test and how it helps us in diagnosing a variety of conditions. If I classify broadly, I'll, we will be looking at three important components in this hemogram test. One would be RBC or the red blood corpuscles. Two would be the WBC or the white blood corpuscles or leukocytes. And three would be the platelets or thrombocytes. RBCs or erythrocytes is responsible for carrying oxygen to various tissues of the body. And the major protein in RBC is hemoglobin. So just by looking at the hemoglobin level, we can know whether the patient has enough RBC or no. And uh, the hemogram test in the RBC, there are indices like MCV, MCHC and so on, which tells us the reason for uh, low hemoglobin, the reason for anemia. Whether it is uh, iron deficiency, it is, uh, uh, vitamin B12 deficiency, whether it is alcohol induced and so on. Now WBC or the leukocytes are responsible for uh, our immune system. In the presence of infection, they are usually very high. And when we treat it, we see it coming down. And in certain type of viral infections, they are pretty low. Now platelets or thrombocytes tells us the clotting mechanism of the body. Coming to the first component, the hemoglobin part. A low hemoglobin indicates anemia. The normal range of hemoglobin is around 14 to 17 in males and 11.5 to 14 in females. So if at all the hemoglobin is very low, you can experience fatigue, tiredness, lethargy and so on. And uh, ladies who have excessive bleeding, the, the hemoglobin would be low. So I, whenever I see a hemoglobin report and when I say that it is around 8 or 7 in a um, good socioeconomic status person, usually we think of excessive bleeding. So I tell them to get their sonography done and uh, you know see if there are any fibroids and things like that. So by just looking at a hemogram report, the hemoglobin part and the anemia part, we can get to know the reason for their tiredness. What if the hemoglobin is high? In smokers, we see there is a condition called polycythemia where the hemoglobin kind of goes up. When I look at the hemogram report itself, you see a lot of indices, MCV, MCHC and so on. So looking at the indices, it gives us a clue whether the anemia is because of iron deficiency or uh, B12 deficiency. So if at all your B12 is low, uh, usually uh, MCV rises up. Even in alcoholics, uh, the MCV rises up. So just looking at that, I uh, get a fair picture about the history of the patient per se. Now looking at the morphology of, of the cells or the way the cells look. Usually in anemia, because of iron deficiency, we see that the color of the hemoglobin is less. So it would be hypochromic anemia and the cells are very small. So it is called microcytic anemia. And in uh, people with vitamin B12 deficiency, the cells are usually bigger. So macrocytic anemia, we call it. So there are some parasites like malaria, which can be detected in a peripheral smear. So this is one additional information that we get out of this uh, picture. Now coming to the WBC counts. Uh, the, or they are called the white blood cells or the leukocytes which are responsible for our immune system. So any infection these WBC counts go up. Uh, for example, uh, normally the WBC counts have to be between 4,500 to 10,000. In case of any infection, it is 11,000, 12,000, 20,000, 25,000 and so on. If at all, uh, the person is improving 
with antibiotics and things like that which are given for an infection we see that the WBC count is decreasing as well. So it really gives us a uh, gives us an idea whether the patient is responding to treatment or no. Now, uh, if at all the WBC count is very low, that also predicts certain infections. Uh, for example, viral infections, dengue infections, you see that WBC counts are low. Even in WBC count, there are many subtypes. There are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, monocytes and so on. So, when the neutrophils are increasing, usually we say it is a bacterial infection and when the lymphocytes are high, we say it is a viral infection. And if at all eosinophils are more, it again uh, tells you about allergic conditions. So, so many things we get from a WBC count and not only this, even certain types of cancers are picked up by the, by just looking at the WBC count. Now, coming to platelets. So, as all of you know, platelets are responsible for the clotting in the blood. So, if you have a cut, if the platelet uh, are functioning properly, uh, the blood would clot. There is a condition called thrombocytopenia as in the platelet count is less. It happens in viral infections. Many of you would have seen me asking for a platelet count during dengue infections. Because we that in dengue type of viral hemorrhagic fevers, platelet counts are decreased and that is when we need uh, platelet transfusion and so on. If at all it is decreased to a critically uh, low level. So, what is the normal level of platelets? 1.5 to 4.5 lakhs has to be the platelet levels. Platelets are dangerously low. Like in the case of uh, dengue, it can uh, be 1 lakh, uh, 75,000, 50,000. It keeps decreasing. And if we see that it is decreasing um, very low and very drastically, we advise admission and probably arranging platelets for transfusion and so on. Otherwise, treating bleeding could occur. There is another condition called increased platelets. If the platelets are very high, of course, it can lead to excessive clotting. So, there are conditions like uh, polycythemia or certain bone marrow disorders uh, like cancers especially, which can cause increased platelet counts, again leading to a lot of uh, clotting disorders leading to heart attacks and strokes. So, all these things, if we just look at our hemogram, we get a fair idea of what is going on in your body. And uh, especially in people with uh, diabetes and in people of a geriatric age group, they may not have a high-grade fever to tell you there is some infection going on because the immune system is already suppressed. So, just by looking at the WBC count, we know that there is a chance of infection. Now, if at all their hemoglobin is way too low, we can kind of predict a renal issue going on behind because the erythropoietin which is produced by the kidneys is extremely important for the production of your hemoglobin. So, just by looking at a hemogram, there is so much of information that we get. That is the significance of this small simple test. So I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. Take care, be aware and bye.